You guys, I don't even know where or how to begin. But I do know this is my fourth attempt at filming this with my fan off and I'm hot AF. A secret, can you keep it? Swear this one you'll save. Better lock it in your pocket, taking this one to the grave. If I show you, then I'll know you won't tell what I said. Cause two can keep a secret if one of them is dead. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Still by GG 101. Today is Tuesday, which means only one thing. That is a recap, review, whatever, of Pretty Little Liars. You guys, tonight's episode was just so many things. So many things. And I don't... I feel like I don't even know how to review tonight's episode. Like I said in the intro, this is my fourth time trying to do it. I don't know how to do this right now. It, it, half the episode was making me mad and then the other half had me on the edge of my seat and then I mean you can't really have another half because it's only you know 50 50 however like I want to say like 1 16th made me feel hella sad because of the way that it ended so sad you guys okay so let's just let's just get into this um so the episode starts off with the cop pulling Aria over, and she just, she just sound like she was lying. Literally, this is what she said. Oh, it's okay, I, I thought that I left something in the trunk, and then I dropped my keys, and then I closed it, and then it's okay because my friend has a spare key, and he's coming with it. What? Nobody was believing that, Aria. Nobody. Okay? Helen Keller could see and hear through your BS. That does a lot. Okay? So the cop was like, no, it's okay. We can just shimmy it open. Again, Rosewood, New York. I'm going to have to do a Venn diagram of, of this because I just don't understand, okay? So the cop actually manages to shimmy open the trunk, but then he gets a call in on the radio. So she snatches the keys real quick and slams the trunk. And she's like, great, I got him. Thanks so much. Okay, I got to go. Bye. She gets in the car and she becomes clinically insane for a minute and i don't mean like she just was just like she got mad and got crazy like i mean she looked like she belonged in radley and not the hotel because i don't know who the hell thought that it was a good idea for them to make that into a hotel i'm just saying like why who takes a penitentiary and makes it into a hotel like yes i think this will be chic and fabulous gringos that's who anyway so she's like crazy she's sitting there driving she's looking in the rearview mirror and she's like you make too much noise if you hadn't made any noise i wouldn't know that you were back there nope mm -mm. and then i would just driven to the girls and you would have just stayed in there maybe i should have let the police find you yeah yeah if you hadn't made that much noise you wouldn't have gotten killed yeah yeah um you guys i'm telling you she lost her freaking mind like she literally looked like how Mona looked at the end of the episode. How Mona looked when she was in Radley. I want to play with my dolls. I don't want to leave my dollies. Miss Aria, you're a killer, not Ezra's wife. Like that's literally how Aria was, okay? So she's like, maybe I can make it right. Yeah, I'll just take you to the police. I'll turn myself in and then I can save my friends. So Aria starts driving towards Rosewood police department while that's happening emmy sin um they were sitting in the house now if you are an emmy sin fan i'm sure you ate this scene up but i could not because i okay and i will say it again i have no problem with emmy sin being gay that's your business if y'all want to be a, a, a girl girl relationship that's your business that's anybody's business however my issue with emmy sin is that i don't feel like it's authentic I don't feel any real natural feelings there. Like I feel like all Emily do all Emily is doing is groveling over Allison like she's always done. And I feel like all Allison is being is manipulative. Now, this is a huge part because for the past seven years, Allison has been a manipulative snob. So it's very hard for me to believe anything that comes out of Allison's mouth. It's very hard for me to have empathy for Allison. Okay? So I just I can't get with it. And Emily's all like 
Don't worry. I'll never let anyone hurt you. Because Allison started freaking out. She's like, oh my god, we're going to have the baby, and then who's going to take the baby, and then it's going to be like another Charlotte. And Emily's all like, don't worry, Allison. You think I worked all this time just to be with you, to have that taken away? I'll make sure that you're safe. And I was just like, oh, could you shut up? Could you just shut up? Because you sound like you're groveling. Allison is yet again the victim, and you're then again playing Captain save a hoe Like, yo, it just, mmm, mmm. So the screen pans off and goes towards the fireplace where you see like this little tube and obviously AD is funneling something into their home. How it ends up being is that they funneled in like sleeping gas. They fell asleep and they're like, how do we both fall asleep? And all of a sudden the board game is in there. Now, how did the board game get in there if Mona had the board game? I know what you're thinking. Mona's AD, but she's not. So I'm going to need you to stop coming for my girl because she's not AD. Let me tell you how the board game got in there. While Emerson is having their little fake, whatever it is, and Aria is bugging out talking to corpse in her car, the rest of the modly crew is sitting there listening to Caleb tell them that they just, well, that he and Ezra found out that Mona was AD. Because see, after five years of growing up and maturing and seven years of dealing with this situation okay they have not yet learned that the first person that they think done it never did it they just haven't learned that yet so like mona did it we saw her with the board game first of all you ain't seen nothing caleb because caleb really frost my cookies this episode okay you ain't seen nothing caleb so he's like, we saw her and she had the board and she's a deal. We need to find her. So, of course, Hannah being Hannah is like, no, I don't believe that. I don't believe that Mona is AD. And you're like, yes, they are. So Spencer is like, that's great. We'll bring her to the police. We'll have the police let her know, like tell them what she's been up to. And then we'll all be safe and everything will be OK. Right. Right wrong because never, never in the history of seven seasons had any of their plans ever worked out just saying so hannah's like no i want to talk to mona and caleb's like well you're not going by yourself and they end up going to um mona's apartment now you're you're probably wondering well Gigi, what the hell does that have to do with the board game getting into emmyson's house well i'm gonna tell you right now stop rushing me okay you, you gotta get background stories. A little bit of fluff and filler makes the pie really good, right? Can't have a pie without apples. Let me get there. So they go to Mona's. Mona walks into her apartment and she goes to lift up the game and she looks clinically insane. She's like, oh, yes, I've got the game. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna figure out who AD is and I'm gonna make everything right. And she lifts up the game. Well, she lifts up the board for the game and guess what? The game wasn't there. However, there was a note that said, it's time for pie. Creepy. These notes, these notes just sometimes are just like creepy. So she darts off. Hannah and Caleb see her and Caleb's like, because Hannah starts going after her. And he's like, what are you doing? And Hannah's like, I want to know where she's going. Don't you? So against Caleb's better judgment, he just follows Hannah who follows Mona. They end up at this restaurant, something crows. I always forget certain things. And you guys always let me know in the comments down below, which I love. So you'll help me with that restaurant name later. But they end up at this crows place, which is where Hannah reached out to, whew, excuse me, to Cece when she first got released to meet, but Cece never met her. So she said, girl. So she said. And Caleb's like, we need to go in and just confront her. We'll drag her out and we'll take her to the police. And Hannah's like, no, we need to see who she's meeting. She looks so nervous. All of a sudden, Spencer shows up. And Caleb's like, well, we're just going to go in there. And Hannah's like, no, we're not. I don't agree with that. And Spencer's all like, look at you two. You're fighting like you're an old married couple. They look at each other mad at us. And Spencer's like, What? whatever spencer grabs hannah and goes talk to her on the side while she does that caleb goes in hannah turns around and they're like where did caleb go because they were literally literally away for less than 30 seconds and homeboy made it from the spot they were lurking into the restaurant to mona so you know what i'm in need for caleb to join track so he goes in he confronts mona and mona is legit like this what are you doing here 
And Caleb is like, Are you enjoying your pie? And Mona's like, It's all right. What are you doing here? Caleb. Who are you here to meet? Mona. That's none of your business. Caleb. We know about the game, and you are going to get up, or we will drag you out of here, and you're going to go to the police, and you're going to tell them how you made everybody's life a living hell. Mona. I don't have the game. Caleb. Well, where is it? Mona. I don't know. It was taken from me. It's always taken from me. The game is always taken from me. I can never keep the game. Caleb. Who took the game? Mona. I don't know. I don't know. But someone's always taking the game from me. I told Hannah I wanted nothing to do with the filthy game. Caleb. Well, you're going to come with us, whether you want to or not. And then all of a sudden, the waitress brings the bill. So she looks at the bill, and obviously there's something uh, written on the bill. And he's like, what does it say? And she's like, none of your business. He says, get up, we're going to go. They get up. She starts to go the opposite way. So he's like, where are you going? She's like, can I go to the bathroom first? And all of a sudden, Spencer and Hannah bust in. She books it. All right. Mona was out okay homegirl was is out when i tell you she was out she was is night out okay she was out and they run after her and this random guy just got up and got in their way and i was like who are you came from this random guy got up and got in their way and wow oh okay dude i just lost my train of thought the random guy got up and got in their way. They push him out of the way. They run into the bathroom. They don't see Mona, but they see the receipt. And it said, leave now. That's what the little ticket thing said. So, like, well, where did she go? She didn't flush herself down the drain. And Caleb starts feeling the walls, and he finds a secret passageway. Him and Hannah go back and forth about whatever. Caleb's like, I'm going. Spencer's like, fine, I will go with him. And Hannah was like, fine, I'm going to go inform the others. So, Emerson calls her and lets her know, hey, we found the board game or whatever and mind you i was live tweeting through all of this so some of this stuff i kind of missed because i was so busy tweeting because i didn't want to like forget what i had to say and somehow emerson and hannah ended up at ezra's and ezra was uber pissed and this made me mad he was like, so you stopped talking to her? And they were like, uh, che, yeah. do you know what she did? And he was like, so what? I recall her doing plenty of things to help you. And da 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 da. And all I could say, if you were live tweeting with me, live tweeting, if you were live tweeting with me, then you know exactly what I said. All I had to do was say, Ezra, shut up. And because it was Twitter, I couldn't really say what I wanted because it's used to, I really still can't say what I want. But if you know me in real life, you know exactly what it was that came out of my mouth. But all I was like, Ezra, shut up. You have some nerve. Do you know what you've done? Do you know what she's done? Do you know what they've done for her? You have some nerve. I kind of get it. Or it's like you've all done things or whatever to each other and you've never disowned each other. And you, you know what? You're absolutely right. However, she specifically joined the A team, team the AD team, and did some seriously, seriously grimy shiz naive to her friends. More grimy than Spencer stealing your kid. Okay? More grimy than that. And yes, I'm a little bit biased because I do like Spencer. Schmerp. Okay? So, I don't really remember what happened with that because, again, like I told you, I was live tweeting. But he was mad and he was just over it. And that just really made me angry. He just really, really, really made me angry. So, they're trying to get a hold of Spencer and Caleb. But obviously, they have no service down there. Caleb finally tells... Um, Spencer that they got married and that he's sorry and this on the third and Spencer's like Ezra tackles her to a tree like first of all my first instinct would have been to bitch slap him excuse my language I'm so sorry I'm really sorry but like don't touch me like that don't tackle me like that don't come out of nowhere like that I don't like stuff like that I'm from Brooklyn we don't play them games okay I'm just saying so he's she's like I gotta make it all better he was like I don't care about your friends she's like well I do I did the wrong thing I shouldn't have done that to them and he's like so what you've all done things she was like it doesn't matter I shouldn't have done that to them and I need to make it right. And he's like, it doesn't matter. We'll just go. No one's going to know. No one know, has any information on you. She's like, wrong. <laughs> I've got a body in the trunk. They start walking over to the trunk and guess, guess what's missing? 
the body. Shocker. So I'm missing a lot of things from my brain right now. So we're just going to fast all the way forward. Oh, mind you, this whole entire time, Tanner is just trying to get them like to go to jail. And we're going to flash all the way forward to Mona. And what was going on with Mona? So they find Mona. She is at the top in the bell tower of this church. I'm telling you, these girls are all going to hell with all the shenanigans that be going on in this church. Just sacrilege. Straight sacrilege. So Mona's there. And Mona is crazy Mona. Like, she's got the glasses and the pigtails and everything. And she starts talking to Hannah, because Hannah's the one who found her, like she was Cece. And she basically starts going into a flashback reenacting of what happened. So basically, Mona went to go meet Cece, or met her at the bell tower with some flowers, which is the same flowers that she was gripping when she fell, when well, when they found her dead body. And, you know, she was basically... Cece basically said, now that I'm free, I'm going to be so much worse than before. Like, you guys have no idea. I'm going to make it seem like what I did to you guys in the past was a picnic. And Mona's like, actually, you're not. Because I'm not going to let you do that to my friends in the side and the third. Cece's all like, um, when you look in the mirror, do you still see nerdy Hannah? I mean, Mona? Because that's what I'm looking at right now. So Mona picks up a screwdriver and she's like am i supposed to be afraid of you and she like puts a screwdriver to her back and and like has her towards the 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 little bell thing that she fell out of and she's all like are you scared and cc genuinely looks scared like for the first time cc was getting her just desserts and she like Mona was talking all this shenanigans and then Mona let her go and pushed her to the floor and said you know how you just felt I'm gonna make you feel that way every day for the rest of your life because that's how you made me and my friends feel and Cece was like I knew you didn't have the guts. You're not sure of yourself. None of you are, and you never will be because I took that away from you. <laughs> and so she and Hannah start getting into a fight because Cece hit her first with something. It sounded like a tire iron or a crowbar. Again, items, I don't know why these items are in the bell tower of a church, but mm, schmurp, every church is different. I know my church's bell tower don't have these items in them. Just saying. So they start going back and forth, and... She comes back, like the scene comes back to Mona and Charlotte, and she's like, I made a mistake once, but I'm not going to do it again. And she tries to throw Hannah out the window thinking that it was Charlotte, and freaking Caleb grabs her. They both take her out, and they're like, great, she admitted to it, we can take her, da 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 da, -da. and she's like, we're not taking her to Tanner like this. There's something wrong, blah, 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 blah. As they're walking her to the car to take her back to the house, they get two puzzle pieces which are the two final puzzle pieces to the game so they all go back and they're all sitting there looking at her and they're like yo what the flip no squad and basically it turns out that you know they're like what why is she like this they brought up freaking dr sullivan talk about throwback thursday on a tuesday okay they talked they called talked about calling dr sullivan and having her talk to mona and then her taking her to the police because you know It'll be less sus. And um, they put the final puzzle pieces together and it's like, ding, 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 congratulations. Now, here's why I'm confused. Because last episode, Spencer definitely smashed it. So now it's a whole new phone. Where'd the whole new phone come from? Where? But it was like, congratulations. And it was like this really weird futuristic Jumanji with this guy in a hood or whatever comes and shows him where the body. The body is at Aunt Carol's house. 
ironically enough, in Charlotte's grave. They go there. They were going to dig it up, dig it up. And then Arya's like, do we have to do this? And they're like, duh, it's part of the game. We might as well just play. And she's like, no, I'm done playing. Like, we've been playing this for seven years. I'm over it. Let's just walk away and let it basically let it be. Let it be. As they walk away, this truck comes and i don't know what the hell that was you guys i really don't but like a truck comes it lifts everything up and like the well the diggy part lifts up and tanner and her crew pop out and like hey fancy finding a chew here she sends them all into the station and then we see mary drake let me stop right here because they she has tanner puts them in like the holding room but it's not really the holding room it's where they take the pictures and then all of a sudden the lights come on and the double-sided mirror pop up and it's Mary Drake talking to Tanner. So before I go any further, I just have to pause because at some point in this story, before we get to that point, um, Mary had met up with Spencer at the Lost Woods, which I still think that motel is so ironic to the show. And she said that she had signed the deed over and it's owned to Spencer and Allison. And it was her way of giving back something to her. That, excuse me, guys, whoa. That whole scene just pulled in my heartstrings because it just seemed so real. It seemed new. It seemed fresh. And I can connect to Mary Drake and Spencer more than I can Emerson. And she was like, take it. And, you know, you're going to need lawyer's fees because I've been hearing what the police have, you know. And that's it. So she was like, goodbye, Spencer. And Spencer's like, take care. <laughs> it was just so sad okay so flash forward now we're back at the police station mary drake confesses to the whole entire murder so that way she saves spencer and all her friends and spencer is just in tears i'm borderline in tears i'm like that's so grimy like it's grimy in the sense and i tweeted it i was like i'm marlena king like how could you just give us this like couple of episodes of this storyline you should have introduced the storyline in season two because it's so good so tanner basically is like well Mary Drake confessed, you guys are all free to go. And Arya's like, but you just thought that we were criminals, like, not even five minutes ago. And she was like, mm, you're right. However, the judge wants an open and shut case, and Mary just copped to everything. Everything she says corroborates with all the evidence that we have. And while I still think that you're guilty, what I think and the evidence that I have are two different things. So let's just let it go. You're free to go. Goodbye. And Spencer's like, can I see her? And she's like, I don't think that's a good idea. Just leave it be. And her friends, not her friends, I'm sorry, Aria. Spencer, she did this for us. Just let it go. You see what I'm saying? Aria and Ezra belong together because they're both selfish nincompoops. Okay? Because if the shoe had been on the other side, Aria would have fought so hard to have seen her mother or her father or Mike. Okay? But because it was somebody else, she's like, it's a free pass. Just let it go. Forget how it made her feel. And she confessed to killing Jessica. So basically, the whole entire show ends with them saying to Mona, they're back at the, at the house. They say to Mona, Dr. Sullivan's coming. She's going to take care of you. It's over. The game shuts off. It ends. And this is the part that, like, really made me sad and made me so cumbersome in the very, very, very intro of this video. Um... It panned over the whole entire Jumanji's game of the Liars Lamont. And then the song, I Can't Live If Living Is Without You, plays. And then you see A.D. drive off into the sunset. Now, here's a little bit of a clue about A.D. A.D. is mad short. Mad short. Now, that happens. AD drives off into the sunset and then they do the promo for the final and this is when it got real because when they did the pro the promo they did a flashback through all seven seasons leading up to present day and saying you'll get all your answers but as usual and then it said right there in letters series finale and I hate reading those words because it just means that everything is so final so you guys that's what happened i know this was yet again another long long episode but i am i'm sorry i was looking to see the time it, it's it's long I'm, so i know this was really really long but you guys this episode was crazy ezra pissed me off so bad in this episode because it's like how dare you everything that you've done everything and i mean but there's so so many points were brought up 
Like, as the one thing Ezra said that I kind of concurred with was the one thing that AD didn't have on them was the fact that they could forgive each other and stay connected. AD never learned how to forgive. And that's why AD is on this vicious, vengeful cycle. So that I did agree with. And then the other thing that um, I did agree with, and that was really sad, was when Cece said, you're not sure of yourself. None of you are. And that's because I took that away from you. And that... It sucks because she really did. She has forever made them those, what, 14 or 15 year old girls that were getting those messages from the beginning. They are forever stuck in that place because of her. And it was just so surreal. And like, it was, it's just crazy. So you guys, I'm not going to make this any longer. Um, I have my theories video that you guys will be receiving on Monday because I kind of want to drag it out. I don't know why my hands look so red. Is it just me? I don't know, but my hand looks red. Anyway, you guys will be getting my Pretty Little Liars um, review on Monday. And as far as, because a lot of you guys have been asking and voting, like, am I going to do a YouTube live stream or am I going to do an Instagram live stream? I've never done YouTube live, so I'm going to have to figure out the logistics for that. I know with Instagram live, you only have an hour and the season, the series finale. Oh, it's so sad. It hurts me to say that. I die a little bit inside every time I say it. But the series finale <laughs> is two hours long. So I have to figure out the logistics of all those things. But I do want to say thank you guys so much. Like I said, we made it to over, well, over a thousand subscribers this weekend, which means a huge Pretty Little Liars giveaway. So you guys, there will be a Pretty Little Liars giveaway. I will give you more details on the ending of the show, which is next Tuesday. I purchased all the stuff this weekend. I might purchase a little bit more. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for all your love and support. I've had so much fun with you guys and I'm no I'm not gonna I'm, we're, we're not finalizing it we still have one more episode we still have one more episode we're not finalizing it like that mm -mm, no girl but as always if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it or if you enjoyed me and you want to see more from me then you definitely need to be part of the GG Meister Mer pod and come swimming with us on all our adventures how much you do that you're probably asking well it's simple all you have to do is rate comment subscribe and share because sharing is caring and I'll be seeing you in my next video loves and likes ya bye